When I was a kid, my veterinarian told me, never trust a vet that doesn't have pets of their own. Fortunately, I'm covered in that regards because I have four dogs, four cats, one giant lizard, one venomous lizard, one chameleon, one bearded dragon, two tortoises, uh, turtles, one tortoise, six poison dart frogs, a saltwater fish tank, a freshwater fish tank, a scorpion, and this spider that lives behind my file cabinet, which I guess counts. So that is 31 plus animals, and that is far more than a single veterinarian could ever possibly take care of. That's right, I am an animal hoarder. Well, I would be if I didn't have 23 staff members who help me. The funny thing is, everybody thinks that animal hoarding is a problem, but so few people actually understand what it is. The stereotype is the little old lady in the apartment with multiple cats. Cue the crazy cat lady memes. Man, wouldn't it make my job so much easier if it was that simple? Sex. Female. Number of cats. Three. Hey! Of course things are more complicated. So the SBCA defines animal hoarding like this. Somebody who has more than the normal number of companion animals, whether it is dogs, cats, rabbits, snakes, birds, whatever. And that the individual is unable to provide even the basic standards of care to these animals, be it food, shelter, veterinary care, resulting in illness and possibly death. And the big one is that the individual is in denial about all of this. That they think that they are providing good care when in fact the animals are suffering. Yeah, it seems pretty simple, doesn't it? Of course, it's never that simple. And this is me, but I describe hoarding in five different ways. For some people, it's because of loneliness. When they're isolated socially or culturally, they collect animals to fill the void in their lives. This is what we typically think of as animal hoarding. One of the ones is empathy hoarding. And this is a situation where people start off with the best of intentions. They take in animals to help out other people. But as the number of animals increase, their ability to care for those animals diminish. That's right, animal hoarding under the guise of animal rescue, a major problem with some no-kill shelters. And the thing that's different against loneliness hoarding is these people are often highly charismatic and have a huge social network of supporters that cannot for the life of them believe that abuse is occurring in these situations. And what they don't know behind the scenes is these animals are so crowded together that disease runs rampant and animals are dying at high rates. There's always the phrase, if I don't take it in, they'll just kill it. Well, yes, death is preferable to the hellhole that you'll put some of these animals in. And these places will frequently convince their followers that the authorities are out to get them. That the authorities don't want the competition. Or my favorite is the authorities don't understand how to take care of animals. Only the rescue does. But behind the scenes, the animals are being crowded together so much that eventually the number of animals that are coming in start to equal the numbers of animals that are dying due to rampant disease and overcrowding. And the most psychotic thing about this is that the individuals truly start to believe that this is normal. You'll often hear them say things like, oh, the animal came in this sick. The animal's taking a very long time to recover. It doesn't take six months for a cow to recover from mastitis. And let me be clear, these types of hoardings have more to do with mental illness than criminal neglect. These people truly believe in their minds that they are doing good by these animals. This is why making sure the authorities have the ability to enforce regulations and monitor these people is so important. And of course, what complicates the matter is that many of these types of hoarding situations get mixed in with some of the more complicated and morally dubious types of animal hoarding. Some people hoard animals because they're collectors. They get an emotional high every time they collect something shiny and new, which works great for a coin collection, but probably inappropriate when you're talking about a living animal. Pew, 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 pew. And of course, there's always something new and shiny. In the exotic animal world, there's always new species, new colors, new patterns available. 
And it's a very difficult one to monitor because with reptiles, so many animals can be kept in very small enclosures. As a matter of fact, this type of hoarding is extremely difficult to prosecute with only one jurisdiction, Alberta, successfully prosecuting reptile hoarding cases in the case of the Riverside Pet Store in Calgary and Drumheller Reptile World. Now, it is true that Ontario is looking at some of their private or roadside zoos and Toronto has taken a very close look at some of these traveling exhibits or outreach programs that people are doing for birthday parties due to animal welfare concerns. Sometimes people hoard animals for financial gain. This would be the example of uh, puppy mills. The thing about puppy mills is the more dogs that you have, the more puppies you produce, and the more money you make. So there's a financial incentive to cram as many animals in as possible, and a financial incentive not to provide the quality of care because every penny counts. One of the problems is that the rules and regulations regarding animal breeding oftentimes jut up against the needs and demands of the agricultural industry. So animal welfare meets industrial needs and worse, power. For some people, they collect animals so that they can exert power over them. And this is oftentimes what leads to cases of criminal neglect. Fortunately, the legal system recognizes that there is a connection between animal abuse and more violent crime. So prosecution tends to be a lot more enforced in these situations. So what should you be looking out for? Well, the simple fact is people with way too many animals. Duh! Now, it doesn't mean that they're abusing their animals. Many people have lots of pets that they can take care of. So the thing that you need to do is take a closer look. Are animals being neglected? Duh! Well, first off, reach out to your local authorities. They'll investigate and step in if needed. At least they'll know who and what to monitor for. 